Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webcast. Today, we will be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of Semantic Ghost and Smart Deploy. My name is Heidi Flagg, and I'm the marketing manager here at Smart Deploy. I have a few people in the room here, and one person who is dialed in as a special guest of ours. I'm just going to do some quick introductions. So uh, we have Aaron Suzuki. He's our CEO and founder. Good morning, everybody. Spencer Dunford, our general manager. Hello. Eric Nymark, our senior systems engineer. Hi, everybody. And we also have our special guest, Jeff Douglas, uh, joining us from Elementus. He's a customer of Smart Deploy. Are you on, Jeff? Good morning. Good morning. Great. Perfect. Everyone's here. <laughs> Just a few quick items before we get started. We have this webcast scheduled for 30 minutes, and we will try to be very respectful of your time and, and wrap it right around that 30-minute mark if you need to head off to other meetings. We'll do a live Q&A with whatever time we have left at the end, so please feel free to use the Q&A within the GoToWebinar uh, uh, system here. So just send those questions, and you can send them throughout. If they're relevant, we can answer them quickly as we're going through our presentation. We'll do that, otherwise we'll save them for the end. We're also doing a live raffle today, so two attendees will win uh, 25 Smart Deploy licenses. So we will do that raffle at the end and announce those winners live. And I think with that, we will go ahead and hand things off to Aaron to get started. Thanks. So um, I often take a second at the beginning of each webcast to talk about how we got into this and why we do it. And I think it's relevant because we really are a lot like you. And we have very technical roots and um, many of our staff uh, across our organization have been IT professionals or systems engineers in some form. And that's how we got into this, is we saw a problem that we thought needed to be solved better. And that's why we undertook this. It was around the time of virtualization going very mainstream and thought that there was a smarter way, a simpler way, and a cleaner way to get this very technical job done. Um, we weren't sure that it would end up being, or I should say we didn't know when we set out to do this, that we were setting out to make the product that is now Smart Deploy that uh, so many people know and love and, and were encouraged to have so many customers. Um, but that's what it became in part because of our commitment to working with people like you, continuing to stay in contact with IT managers and IT professionals who do this job every day and are dealing with these kinds of complicated problems and even keeping pace with the changes in devices. Devices keep getting more complex, more sensors built into the devices, changes, big changes like um, BIOS to UEFI, keeping pace with new operating systems. So all of that has led us down this road of creating the tool set we have today. And very quickly on the, today's topic, you know, we're not here to say that Symantec is in any way inferior or that Ghost is a, a worthless product. In fact, quite the opposite, we believe, and Eric, who's gonna talk in a minute, has a ton of experience working a lot with Ghost. So we know very well that it's an incredibly useful tool and has a lot going for it. But we also know that we are unique, Smart Deploy is unique from the context of our continued investment in the product and our connection to the community and the work that we're trying to do to advance the agenda through new features, um, cloud delivery, um, and so on and so forth. So we, uh, of course, invite you and, and hope that you've uh, registered for the trial and, and we'll check out the product further and um, hopefully take something away from, from today's webcast. So thanks again for, for joining. Thank you, Aaron. And we're gonna go ahead and hand things off to Spencer Dunford, who's gonna jump right in and get to the jump right in and get to the meat of this presentation. So cool. let's take it away. Thanks a lot, everybody. So just a quick background or, uh, on Smart Deploy for those of you that aren't terribly familiar with it. Um, and maybe you've had a chance to take a look around the Smart Deploy website. I'm not, you know, really sure, but essentially, uh, Smart Deploy is Windows OS and application deployment, and we give customers a really great ability to have a centralized single image management practice and deploy 
one image out that you you create based off of the custom software that you like uh, to any device in, in your environment. Uh, it's simple and straightforward, easy to use, uh, best practices are baked in all over the place to try and make it a really straightforward um, thing for any IT generalist to, to get in and um, get going and be successful with. Uh, plugs right into your existing environments using your existing uh, team members and equipment and network, etc. Um, so super straightforward way to roll out um, new PCs, desktops, laptops, tablets, servers, um, break fix scenarios, uh, you know, OS migration projects, all those types of things where you need to make sure that you've got a consistent OS and app stack on anything. Those are good scenarios to think about um, for smart to play. So just a quick backgrounder on that. Um, with respect to Ghost and Smart Deploy, we wanted to cover out on several topics uh, and kind of see how they how they compare and stack up. Um, these are the kind of the key areas we want to look at today around um, device drivers, Windows 10, what that means, um, especially as we're getting into Windows as a service and how Microsoft is going to be rolling out future releases of operating systems. A lot of customers are moving from 7 uh, to 10 and kind of in the middle of those projects and um, that landscape continues to evolve. Modern environments, I mean, some customers have BYOD initiatives to support and uh, pretty diverse sets of hardware these days uh, that they need to um, secure and monitor. Um, we're going to talk about technical support, how you get help with these types of um, solutions, and finally tie out on um, kind of deployment speed and actual performance and where the rubber meets the road. So at a high level, um, Symantec Ghost has come, roots come from um, kind of older hard disk uh, duplicator days where you wanted a beautiful copy of an existing um, hard disk to be replicated out to many others. Um, super useful, uh, especially um, when uh, hardware wasn't so diverse and we didn't have so many makes and models and configurations of devices. Um, it's a, you know, Ghost uh, essentially is a hard disk um, sector based cloning tool. So if you think about that and that each unique sector on each unique disk on the you know master disk is going to get replicated out to any um, subsequent disks. There are a lot of great, uh, great scenarios that that uh, can be super reliable um, for that type of for that type of process. And um, if you're in an environment where you want to take a backup or a point in time of an exact system in an exact state and time, that could work out really well for you. Or if you're in an environment where all your machines are exactly the same and nothing's going to change and you know that um, architecture type and chipset and you know all uh, video drivers, BIOS and stuff, you know, that's all exactly the same, uh, it can work really great. Um, Smart Deploy is different in that, that even at the, from the imaging file format perspective, we use the Microsoft Windows imaging file format or a, a WIM file. Um, WIMs are different than hard disk sector based tools, so if you think about that going in, you can have a better understanding about which types of projects are going to work out better for you. Um, so WIMs are file based in nature, and when you make a WIM, it goes and captures all the unique files um, from the source uh, once, um, rather than each sector by sector. Uh, separately, there, it's a, there's a, an, a, basically an XML manifest that has the files and ACLs and properties about all the unique files, so when you put that uh, image back together on a target system, stuff goes back where it's supposed to go. So um, inherently, it can better lend itself to hardware independence. So the Smart Deploy model is all built around the philosophy that customers may have diverse um, environments and different types and different makes and models of machines that they want to deploy to. And Smart Deploy enables that for you, handling all the device driver management. So you get to focus on the image the way you like it with the custom software that you want and we'll take care of the, the hardware piece and ensure that that's going to land beautifully on any machine that you um, want in your environment. So that's a quick kind of background or at high level, um, but I want to uh, turn some time over to Eric and have him dive a little bit deeper on um, some of the nitty gritty between uh, Smart Deploy and Ghost. Awesome, thank you Spencer. So yeah, when we talk about Windows 10 support, um, it, it means so many different things now with the release cycle and cadence that Microsoft has been coming out with. It's, it's still Windows 10, but we're kind of more to a Windows 13 phase now with RTM 1503, anniversary update, now creators update coming out. And, you know, continuing to support the, the environment or the operating system itself as it's changing at such a rapid cycle. Um, that's not to say that Ghost is 
cannot work with Windows 10. It's just that we've heard a number of different uh, complaints that users and current customers have had throughout the, the last two years or so that Windows 10 has been available. And a lot of that goes to kind of just knowing specifically what you need to do to actually get Windows 10 to work, especially now with the ubiquity of UEFI and the BIOS. Um, you know, your BIOS-based image isn't going to work on a UEFI-based device anymore. Um, capturing a hidden system recovery partition, that requires using special switches from the Ghostcast server, um, and as well as some limitations around sysprep and what it can do with these AppX packages that are built into the operating system. And we're seeing that more and more, you know, search and the start menu are now AppX packages and they require this specific generalization, otherwise they fail to work in user accounts af after deployment has been uh, completed. With uh, Smart Deploy, we're continuing to stay on top of all of these different release cycles that are coming out from Microsoft. Um, you know, we're getting the bits as early as we possibly can, make sure everything that works, uh, everything that's there is working correctly, and get those releases out to our customers. Uh, in addition to that, we also take care of some of these common scenarios like UEFI. Um, based on capturing an image from a, a virtual machine, it starts in legacy mode, but being that it's a, a file-based image format, we can actually put that on a UEFI-based device and make everything work the way that it's supposed to. Um, so we just kind of guide you through the process as, as much as possible to make everything come out the way you expect it on the endpoint. And then talking about some uh, expectations of deployment product, products in modern environments, uh, as we've seen, you know, device um, ubiquity is, is going more and more, and, you know, IT staff is supporting more and more devices, sometimes five or more models, and you have to go create a specific image for each of those models with your normal ghost process. With Smart Deploy, we kind of fix this, like Spencer was saying, with the, the driver packages that we call platform packs, and our guys go out and create those for you so that this image that you create will work on any kind of device. Um, and we also support that across multiple versions of Windows. A lot of our customers are still using Windows 7 while they're rolling out Windows 10 and have specific departments that are using 8.1, and you know it turns into this big thing where it's not you just have one device that's running one version of Windows that's easy to support. Um, in addition to that, there's more and more remote workers. I mean, our small environment here also has a few remote workers, Salt Lake, Portland, and how do you actually maintain those users in break-fix scenarios or getting them new laptops? And we've made an investment into the cloud to modernize Smart Deploy so that it can work in those scenarios as well. All right, cool. so I'll turn it back over to Spencer to talk kind of more about the platform packs and support. Cool, thanks a ton, Eric. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little better context of understanding some of those differences that are down in the weeds that sometimes don't see the light of day but are really impacting and customer impacting. And I, I still spend a lot of my time talking to customers on a da daily basis. And the support piece is a big part of uh, our business. And uh, all of our guys are here in our uh, Seattle, Washington-based <clears throat> headquarters. and can pick up the phone and call and talk to a friendly uh, support person as part of the services that are included with our support subscription when you buy Smart Deploy. So it's, you know, kind of as, as Aaron mentioned, we, you know, started out uh, as um, IT professionals and started to build this tool to better help more people that were in situations that we ran into. And so <coughs> we like working with customers. We like talking about deployments and, you know, uh, we're easy to get a hold of and, and friendly. And that can be a big differentiator. We're not a, um, a huge team, but we're a smaller team that's, you know, more really super experienced and really good at this and passionate about these technologies and these challenges. And we look forward to helping customers solve them. And um, we listen to our customers and our feature roadmap and, uh, stuff that we add into the product is directly tied into customers um, requesting that. Um, and so we work closely with customers on the problems that they have. And if there's challenges, then we start to fold them into the product to in normal, you know, more of the scenarios that customers are looking at today, right? So um, a big one right now is, you know, seven to 10 and pull over all the user stuff uh, at a remote office or even a, a home user. And we're able to do that through the through the cloud. And so that's, that's kind of, um, the types of projects that we're looking at doing and ultimately making sure that all that happens as fast as possible where wherever it can from you know 
offline deployments from a simple USB stick that go zip zip all the way through, you know, use Google Drive or OneDrive or OneDrive for Business or Dropbox and you know, you can see a deployment happen in 30 minutes to three hours, just kind of depending on bandwidth and all that. Um, but it beats UPS and FedEx and, and all that stuff. So um, with that in mind, I did want to turn some time over to Jeff and you can kind of hear from one of our existing customers and his experience of moving from Ghost uh, to Smart to Play and hear what hear what it was like for him. Yeah, thank you, Spencer. So we will hand this over to Jeff now. And just to give you a little bit of background, Jeff is a systems analyst at Elementus. He's been a Smart Deploy customer for a couple years now. He has over 25 years of IT experience. And so he has used Symantec Ghost um, in his previous role at the previous company he was with and also went through using some other tools before they started using uh, Smart Deploy at Elementus. He's very active in the Spiceworks community as well. He has over 700 contributions over there. So um, if anybody from the Spiceworks community is joining us today, be sure and, and find Jeff. He's Jeff underscore D and you can follow him or ping him there if you you know want to reach out after the event. But I'm going ahead going to, going to go ahead and hand things over to Jeff to walk through um, just a little bit about about his journey and, and the experience that he has and um, take it away, Jeff. Thank you, Heidi. Um, currently, I work for the company Elementus, as Heidi mentioned. We are a global company um, that are all over the East Coast and a few in the West Coast, and especially in Europe and Asia. So we're, we're a little bit everywhere. Um, we're a chemicals company. So anything from shampoos to L'Oreal makeups, anywhere in between. We're like most IT companies, we're, we're very lean. So we range from maybe three to four main techs here that covers all the United States and we have a group over in Europe. Um, of course, our management expectation is always wanting something yesterday. So with that being said, when you have a departments having new employees show up at the last minute and not giving enough notice um, set up is very important and we need to deliver as quick as possible. And Smart Deploy is a lifesaver tool that allows us to do that. Um, prior to Smart Deploy we had used the Dell ID3 imaging tool and used an SCCM. This took almost three hours to be imaged with the OS then having applications pushed to the device. Um, that just wasn't meeting our expectations, let alone management. Um, they had somebody waiting to start work. It wasn't very practical for everyday use. Since the Dell ID3 tool was being retired from being uh, provided from Dell, we had to start looking at a different uh, utility to use and smart deploy stepped up to that need. We looked at Ghost and we looked at a few other utilities and they just weren't quick enough. And with Ghost, some may know that you have to have an image and maintain that image for each type of hardware that you do use. So that's very time consuming. When you have a lean IT department, you just don't have the time or the resource to, to dedicate to that. That could turn into a full full IT technician right there. So with Smart Deploy, you can have one golden image and just download your different driver packs that you need that you're going to de be deploying. So in our environment, we have almost five to eight different types of equipment from desktops to laptops to now tablets that are almost just the same as a uh, from a Surface to an HP tablet. We're mainly a Dell shop, but we're looking at using HP to move forward as well. So with just having to download a driver pack, you don't have to redo your image every time. So with that being said, the performance was there. It, it's taken me maybe 15 minutes to deploy a machine fully working, and the user can start using it within 45 minutes to be enjoying the domain. So from three hours to 15, that's a real lifesaver and it's worth every penny. Um, Smart Deploy support is excellent. Um, you can email them or give them a phone call. 
their email, they'll respond within typically, the, I think the latest I've waited maybe was 10 to 15 minutes. And they'll work with you until the issue is totally resolved. We haven't had any real problems with it. Um, they're always up to date and they're always providing new uh, driver packs. And if their one isn't available, they'll work on getting one created and provide it to you. Our executives really appreciate the tool. Um, it's very turnkey. You can do about everything with it. You deploy your image. It'll update your BIOS, apply all your drivers, and you're ready to go. Currently, we're working with our European group to deploy Smart Deploy in Asia, Europe, and all across the United States. This way, we have one standard platform, and it's easier to support all the users having one standard image. Then you're not trying to figure out if somebody has local admin rights, what the password is, the account, the settings, everything. So that's pretty much our experience with uh, Smart Deploy so far, and we've been very pleased. Thank you, Jeff. We really appreciate you taking the time to do that. So thank you so much. And Jeff will stick around for Q&A. If anybody has any specific questions for Jeff, we can uh, try to address those uh, in the next little bit when we're wrapping this up. So I'm going to go ahead and hand things back to Spencer, who's going to walk through and actually show you the Smart Deploy product and, and highlight a few things that are relevant here today. Cool. Thank you, Heidi. <coughs> Excuse me. So, <coughs> excuse me. When you install, install Smart to Play, there's kind of two phases. On the on the one hand, you get the Smart to Play console that allows you to build out and maintain everything that you need to do your deployments, and then obviously there's the deploy side. So, uh, again, try to make everything simple and easy to do. Um, we bring you, you know, basically to this activity section, and if you just follow these five steps in order, you're going to build out everything that you need. So, build your golden reference machine make an image of it, get all the drivers that you need, optionally make an answer file to help automate even your first deployment, um, create some booter deployment media and you're, you're off and running. So a couple of quick things to, to point out, even just from a capture process, most of you familiar with Ghost are used to grabbing the exact make and model of machine that you want, um, booting it up to your Ghost cast server, um, making sure those two pieces are connected. Smart Deploy is pretty different in that you get to just simply browse to a, um, a virtual machine. It'll pick up all the different disks and partitions automatically for, for you at once, and away you go. You've, you've built your whim. You can make your product key in and local administrator account password and all that good stuff. So th the reason why I bring this up is it's fast and simple and easy to create and maintain images. So because of that, more customers are more apt to keep their images more up to date more often. Um, so better performance, less end user downtime, greater security levels, um, and since it's quick and easy for people to do, you know, they're, they're more apt to go ahead and, and do that. Um, the second piece to, to really talk about as well is um, these platform packs. And this is a lot of the magic of Smart Deploy, since you can come in and just you know, pick the manufacturer, model, and operating system that you want support for. So pretend you're a Dell shop and you like the Latitude series computers, you know, come in and pick maybe the 7275, for instance, you want Windows 10 support for that, download that and away you go. You'll have everything that you need. So the, the salient point to take away here is that any one of these images that you've made, these are all your whims that have the OS and applications and um, security and policy levels that you want, it's gonna work like a champ on any one of these machines that you've downloaded one of these platform packs for. We update these all the time. Um, we give you an indicator as to if there's a newer version available and you can download the latest um, as well. Um, taking a look under the hood quickly at one of these platform packs, you can see that we separate these out by make, model, and OS. Um, and this is everything that's needed for that particular machine so that device manager is always perfect. Um, all, the, all the buttons work as, as expected across the board for, for everything. And even as, as Jeff mentioned, you can run custom scripts or tasks on a per model basis and flashing the BIOS is just one cool benefit of giving customers um, these. So you know, adding support for additional machines is easy. Just come in and download an additional platform pack and away you go. Um, the rest of the stuff, you know, answer file, similar wizard. Um, <clears throat> as Eric and I mentioned as well, we're making bigger investments and going further into cloud. Um, so today you can do on-prem deployments or um, 
through cloud storage providers. So if you want to store your images out on your OneDrive for Business account and do the deployments and pull from there, uh, that's available in, uh, here today and we're making, again, further investments into that space. Um, in terms of doing actual deployments, there are several options, even just a local USB stick or DVD is one option, cloud deployments another. Uh, certainly on-premise deployments are possible as well. Um, we do have um, uh, an optional uh, client that you can install on your target machines. Uh, if you do that, they can report back to your central console here, um, and you can do remote deployments to machines in your existing network. So, you know, here's a quick example where, you know, you want to deploy out to a couple of machines in your sales team. You can choose now or schedule for some time in the future. Pick what you want to deploy, hit go, uh, and you're done. Um, multicast is built right in if you want that. Wake on LAN is built right in. You know, if your machine's power settings, shut those machines off, we'll wake them up. Um, it, it's, all, it's all there. So that's a quick demo of a zero touch, you know, push deployment to multiple computers on your existing network. Um, these are those two target machines that we just sent the request to. Um, and basically, we're going to send the, the boot information down to those machines, restart those machines. Uh, when they reboot, they're going to reboot into our Windows pre-installation environment and, uh, and deploy away. So reformat the hard drive, lay down the new image. Um, we go through and process all the drivers for that particular machine. Uh, we sysprep machines automatically for you as part of deployment. Um, and let all that let all that go. A couple restarts later, and, and you're ready to go. So that's a, a really quick high level you know demo overview and kind of what the product looks like, um, and setting you know kind of expectations about what you should see if you do decide to take the next step here. Um, which I turn it back over to her for the kind of call to action. Thank you, Spencer. Yes, that's great. So, of course, we have um, longer demos available. If you'd like to see more of the product, we do a live uh, demo every Wednesday, so we can do that. We can do one-on-one -on -one demos. Um, but thank you for the quick overview, Spencer. Just a little taste for us. <laughs> so we're running um, running close on time here, but um, if you would like to give Smart Deploy a try, uh, there's a free, fully functioning trial available, and you can get to that at just uh, smartdeploy.com slash free trial. And it's pretty quick and easy. Most people can get up and uh, get set up and deploy their first machine in an afternoon. If you have a few hours to dedicate, you can probably get through that, um, depending on um, you know how if you're going to just kind of use the basic configuration or if you want to do more customization. But uh, most people are able to get through it in an afternoon. So pretty quick and easy. And we we specifically made it that way. We know you guys are very busy, and um, taking the time to actually look at another tool can be. Uh, it's not always time that you have available. So we want to be very respectful of that and help you find success as quickly as possible. I do want to announce our two raffle winners. Each of you will receive 25 free Smart Deploy licenses. Um, we will send out an email to the following people to confirm your win. Um, Rick Rispoli, I hope I said that last name correctly, and Bruce Olson. So congratulations, you two um, have both won 25 free Smart to Play licenses and we will follow up with you after the event. So I'm going to switch over and go ahead and open up the Q&A. We have a bunch of questions that came in throughout the presentation. Um, a few of them are relating to licensing of Smart Deploy. Spencer, could you touch quickly on Smart Deploy licensing? How is Smart Deploy licensed and cost information? Sure. Um, so I can give you a quick pointer here, right? At smartdeploy.com under the buy section, this will outline it for you. Um, but basically, Smart Deploy is licensed like most other IT management products are, which is on a per machine basis. Um, that's just the model that has scaled to meet the needs of both small and large customers is on you know per seat. So it's a perpetual license. It's a one-time fee for all the machines that you want to re-image with the product. You can make as many images as you want, re-image that set of computers as many times as you want over and over and over and over. Um, licenses never expire. Uh, support does. You get a choice at the level of support that you want. Uh, you can get it in multi-years if you want. A lot of customers want to you know, TCO on a three-year investment. So we do that that type of work all the time. So one-time fee on the license, unlimited use there, uh, and then just renew maintenance on an annual basis. Um, and we're all set up to sell directly to you through custom quote, um, purchase order, credit card, that type of thing, or through your favorite software resellers. So CDW, Zones, Insight, PCM, Connections, all those types of places, um, all set up to get you, get you going that way as well. 
We do have special pricing for nonprofit and education customers as well. We'd love to earn your business. Um, we'd love for, uh, to do the best we can to be as competitive as we can with respect to uh, pricing and your needs. And uh, of course, like, like Heidi mentioned, we do have the free fully functioning trial version. And our goal with you is to get through a handful of successful deployment together, deployments together and make sure you see everything working in your environment. And then separately, we can work on the, the pricing details. And assuming the product does what you're looking for and works like a champ there, we'll work out the, the pricing and uh, hopefully earn your, earn your business and have you be a happy Smart Deploy customer. Thanks, Spencer. Um, a few kind of specifics. Do platform packs include BIOS firmware? Yeah, for sure. So uh, as Spencer was showing you earlier, um, platform packs can do a number of things. Obviously, there's the, the basic drivers in there to install things like the, the chipset, video driver, um, everything you need to make sure that device manager is nice and clean. But we also detect using WMI the BIOS version. And if it's not the correct revision or you know, it's a, an older revision, we'll take care of it and update it for you. In some scenarios, like uh, Dell machines, you have to update to, say, AO4 before you can update to AO6 and AO8 before you can update to AO10. We take that complexity out and make sure that that all all is set up correctly as well. Great, and for deployment, is Pixie Boot supported? Yeah, for sure. So we have a number of different options for deployment, like Spencer showed. Pixie Boot is one of them. We tie into Windows deployment services for Pixie Boot functionality. Okay. Will Smart Deploy work on a Server 2016 OS? Yeah, for sure. So the service, Server 2016 is supported. There's a few platform packs up there that have support for it as well, and you know those platform packs will uh, that platform pack library will grow as new devices are released with driver support for 2016 and as we get the requests in from customers to build those. Okay, great. Does the answer file support naming the computer and adding to the domain? For sure. So um, right back to this activity section, you launch the answer file and this is going to ask you all the questions that you would be asked during an actual deployment. So a couple of things under this advanced section, identification tab it helps automate the computer naming. So you can pull from BIOS, randomly generate one, um, prefix that with uh, some custom characters as well, reuse the existing name or manually rename it during deployment, whatever you want. Um, you can do data migration. Um, custom scripts or tasks in all the different phases of deployment as well and then further up down in the wizard one of the last options here is whether you want to join the domain or not um, and we also give you the option to add computers to specific organizational units uh, as well so if you have some OUs um, set up then you can specify that and let me just get there real quick it's the last last one here so just specify the fully qualified domain name and again if you have some OUs that you have set up you can join that as well thanks Spencer and uh, we are a couple minutes over that 30 minute mark we are happy to stick around and keep answering questions there's quite a few questions that are rolling in so if you need to step away we completely understand and we are recording this event so watch for an email probably tomorrow, maybe later today, but probably tomorrow, um, with a link to the recording and a link to you know the additional resources that we've mentioned today. And if you have to step away, I do just want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking the time. And we look forward to uh, speaking with you further and uh, potentially earning your business. So have a wonderful day. If you do have to step away, we'll keep answering questions here. Um, let's see here. Let's see. So you mentioned the ability to multicast with zero touch like capabilities. What's the footprint on a smart deploy transmission and how does that integrate with multi-site infrastructures? Yeah, for sure. So as you know from the question, unicast versus multicast, the, the main benefit there is that you're sending one stream with, uh, with multicast rather than multiple with unicast. Um, so it, just like with any other multicast product, we'll send one stream to the different devices on the network and make sure that that is you know, consumed and uses as minimal amount of bandwidth as possible on your network. Um, there are a few scaling options that we could help you with if you have specific needs. Um, but regarding the multi-site uh, infrastructure, this is one of the things that we're talking about in, in creating cloud-based deployments. Uh, should you not have server resources in one of those sites, maybe it's a, a small site that's just connected by you know, a slower WAN link and you don't want to send that um, image over the WAN link or pre-stage it at the location first, you can certainly make use of that generally more um, bandwidth, the, the larger bandwidth tunnel to that 
public internet and download the image from one of the cloud storage providers and go from there. Thanks, Eric. Um, Nanette says, currently our images are 60 plus gigs. Will Smart Deploy be able to handle an image of that size? Yeah, 100%. So we have customers, um, one of them does some video rendering and I believe their images are over 200 gigabytes. So shouldn't be a problem. And if it helps as well, I mean, when the WIM file format that we use is how Microsoft has distributed every operating system from Vista forward. So, you know, you can mount these files, you can service them offline. They do support file deduplication, so they compress pretty well. So I, I don't know, apples to apples, if, you know, if you have a ghost file that's 60 gigs, how much more Smart Deploy would be compressed over that. Um, sort of depends. But, yeah, good compression and, you know, certainly can handle a 60 gig WIM file for sure. Great. Um, David wants to know, do you have a way to set up a default Windows 10 start screen? Yeah, so uh, this is kind of one of those things that we just help you with through the support channel. So there are some complexities around getting a standard user desktop anymore with Windows, um, you know, Windows XP. And before, people just used to configure a user account and copy that user account over the top of the default profile and call it good. And now there are some you know, complexities around sysprep and using copy profile and what does it actually copy and what doesn't it copy and how can you set these things. Uh, that's what our support team is there for and they can certainly help you through that process. But yep, 100% supported and we can put you in, in touch with the right people to get you through that setup. Great, thank you. Um, we have Steve writing in. He says, I build workstations for our office users. How does Smart Deploy deal with driver packs for that situation? And I'm assuming he means white box machines, maybe? We might need a little bit more clarification, but that does lead into the next question from Bob about how they would handle white box PCs and can they create their own platform packs? Yeah, so as I'm sure you saw on the drop down list, we support um, platform packs for all the standard, you know, business class OEMs, Dell, HP, Lenovo. Panasonic, so on and so forth. Um, when you're creating your own devices or building your own white box PCs, you can certainly create your own driver packages. Uh, that's all done through the platform manager, as well as you know the platform packs that we exist, you can edit those as well. So should you have a, a Dell machine that you put a fancy video card in, you could add that driver. Uh, this is also something that we could help with as well. If you know you want us to create platform packs for your white boxes, there's a there's a small charge to create them, but we can do that and we can work with you to make sure that they're all, you know, set up correctly and have everything that you would expect as, as far as driver support. Great. Thanks, Eric. Um, Kenneth says, you mentioned automated sysprep. What about other capabilities to do this type of function with applications such as McAfee antivirus and malware bytes anti-threat? Good question. So in the answer file wizard that we briefly looked at earlier, the way that you would handle that is with a custom script or task. Um, so you can specify these things. This is coming up here. Um, <clears throat> in this task tab, you can execute any custom script or task that you want at these five different phases of deployment. So let's just say at first boot a system, you want to have a batch file or VB script or PowerShell file or what, you know, whatever you want to do to be able to automate and script the install of that piece of software that isn't happy until it's installed post sysprep, then you could go and call that, call that here. So this is kind of your get out of jail free card to allow you to do any sort of custom scripting work and give you these five different phases to ensure that that all goes off without a hitch. Okay, great. Um, Guy wants to know, how does Smart Play handle migration with multiple users? Yeah, for sure. So, perfect timing. Uh, as you can see, migration is built into the product. So basically what that means is if you're, let's say, scenario-based, one of your user's machines breaks and you need to put a new operating system on there and retain all of their files and folders, even if there's multiple users that use that device on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you just go into the Deploy Wizard Advanced Options, select Migrate. You can copy those files up to a network share or do a hard link migration and leave them locally. Uh, and basically, that will go ahead and catch almost all of their settings and files um, as needed and you'll deploy, boot back into the OS and everything will be back the way it was before uh, the machine went down. Works the same way with the uh, OS upgrade as well, so if you're going Windows 7 to Windows 10, same same steps would work to get you your user okay. data. Thanks, Eric. And David wants to know, can you manage the Windows 10 apps, uh, removing the unwanted apps? 
Yeah, so uh, this is a fun one, right? There's more and more stuff that shows up on the default start screen. And like we mentioned earlier on customizing that thing, that's definitely something that we can help with. Um, some of it gets reset and is staged when a new user account is created. If you just deploy by default and um, you know had to remove them before, they'll show up in a new user. But we can definitely help you make sure that they don't show up when a new user is created. Thanks, Eric. And we have a couple people that are asking for additional webcast topics, specifically Smart Play versus WDS and Smart Play versus MDT. So thank you so much for that feedback. We um, are always looking for topics that are going to be interesting for um, for you all. So I appreciate that. If anybody else has other webcast ideas, feel free to send those in, and we'll see if we can get them on the calendar. Um, there, there. Um, just to let you know, there is some documentation on our website. There's a comparisons page that covers some of the Smart Play versus MDT ahead of that, ahead of us getting a website spun, or a webcast spun up. It is on the website. Um, I have a ton more questions here, so we'll just keep answering. Um, there are a couple of questions about um, licensing, wondering if they can transfer a license over to a new machine if they retire one of their machines. Yeah, you can decommission uh, licenses as well, if, you know, if you have support and a machine is being recycled and no longer in use and there's a machine for a replacement. You have a history of all the deployments that you've done, which is a kind of nice feature. So we keep track of the each unique machine that you've done a deployment on. Um, you get a, basically a simple CSV report. Um, send us the list of the machines that you want that are being decommissioned and our team takes care of it. And those licenses are freed up to be used on those uh, new, shiny new machines. Okay. And is there support for Mac or Linux systems? Not currently. Um, the uh, Part of the license rights of using WIM is that you uh, contains Windows binary. So not a lot that we can do to help you on the Mac side other than if you are using Boot Camp and you have your custom WIM you like on all your Windows devices, as part of installing Boot Camp, you could use the custom WIM that you like. So at a minimum, if you are running Windows and Boot Camp on those Macs, you could uh, use your custom WIM on it and we could help you with that. But beyond that, um, Smart Deploys, pretty much Windows, Windows only. Okay, great. Um, we are quite a ways over. We're going to do one last question here. Um, when, re when creating an image, can Smart Deploy create an image with multiple profiles on that image or just an administrator image? For example, an image contains user 1, user 2, user 3 profiles, or is it limited to an image with only an administrator profile for deployment? Yeah, that's a good question, I and mean, I think it kind of goes back to some of these other questions that we get a lot as well about capturing a physical machine, and I think it kind of stems from wanting to set up a device, have everything the way that you want it, and have it show up the same on the device that you deploy to, and Smart Deploy does that. So whatever you set up in the virtual reference machine, be it multiple user profiles, uh, different applications, anything like that will carry through to the deployed device as well. Um, the only difference would be rather than setting up on a physical machine, you set it up in a VM and capture that VM and everything that was there is going to be preserved. Great. Thank you, Eric. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap this session for today. Uh, again, we will send out a recording, so watch for um, an email from us with a link to the recording. If we didn't get to your questions today and you, you, you still need some answers, go ahead and shoot those questions over to sales at smartdeploy.com, and we will distribute those to the appropriate people, whether that's Eric or Spencer or Aaron or Jeff, and we will get you guys the responses that you need. Um, we want to make sure that you get all the information that you're looking for. And um, again, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Congrats to Rick and Bruce, our raffle winners. And we look forward to, uh, to working with you. Hopefully you can jump in and take a look at the free trial and uh, reach back out to us when you have some questions or need a quote or whatever you need. So have a great day, everyone, and thank you again.